Welcome to the Unorthodox Podcast, hosting people doing cool shit. Today we have a guest that has over 300,000 followers on TikTok, 3,000 followers on YouTube, and 10,000 followers on Instagram. A guest by the name of Tyler Golden. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's good? How's it going, my man? How you doing? I'm big chillin. I, I played way too long last night, so I woke up probably like two hours ago, but I'm feeling rested, just chilling out today. Yeah, are you you got a you got a lot to unpack here. You're you're a streamer, you play games, you got a YouTube channel, you're pretty big on TikTok, and you make music. I see. Yes, sir, just a little bit. So I guess let's get into what did you start with first, TikTok, or what is your like intro into the social media realm? Social media realm. It really depends on how far you want to go back. Because whenever I started, <coughs> it was like TikTok was TikTok was the first thing that really blew up. But I I saw it in several different forms like before that happened. Because I was doing uh, graphic design, essentially, from the time I was, like, 14. And I posted on Instagram, and my one goal was to get, like, a 1,000 followers on my graphic design account. That was fun. I used to grind the hell out of that. And I, I was going crazy with that for a while, but I lost a lot of passion for it. Was that, and, just, um, was that like just, like, a hobby? Are you making money off that? Or what was your your deal with it was that. a hobby it was a hobby for a little bit and then eventually i got to the place where i could be paid for it because i mean who doesn't want to get paid for what they love to do you know that yeah, was my word. passion at the time and um i was really just trying to do that for real and um eventually i lost passion from it and i think i just got burnt out because i got to the point i was basically editing them for like 12 13 hours a day and i was like yo i've got to get outside the house that wasn't fun yeah we're, you know, so. and was it like graphic design is in like you're making like for companies you're making thumbnails for people or just like videos or like what was what exactly um, were you honest, were you doing with it i started with uh sports graphic design and i was, I was chilling on that for a while and was really basically doing my thing with that ended up getting to the place where like some companies wanted me to do like graphics for them and i started doing like social media revamps before i even really got on social media and uh it got it got to the point where i was making some money off of it but as, as a 15 year old even if you're making 10 dollars, you're like oh my god i love this yeah, like, you know <laughs> yeah 10 um, bucks at 15 is like, that's exactly. your high roll in a 15 <laughs> exactly because i didn't really have many many things to spend on like Nowadays, you, there's a lot of things to buy and stuff. And I, I wasn't really into anything except uh, graphic design. And uh, so I did that for a little while. I remembered around that time it was Musical.ly for a good bit. And were you, I, I were you on Musical.ly? I was on it for a little bit, but I would definitely didn't post near as much as I do with, uh, or I did with TikTok. Like, um, it was occasional stuff and I'd check it just because that was kind of what was popping quote yeah, unquote, yeah. at the time. But I never really, I didn't really do anything with it like I did with TikTok. And after the graphic design stuff, I started to getting into photography, did a lot of photography and um, was really was really doing that and loving that for a long time. And uh, after the photography, you know, it's been a, it's been kind of like a, a gradual, a gradual change over time with it. Like it went from uh, graphic design to photography, to video. And that's what led me to TikTok. And uh, I was doing YouTube. I was doing like short films and stuff. And I was making short films for people around uh, for around my city. And I was doing that for a while. Enjoyed that a whole lot. But um, I found TikTok around the time. I think it was my freshman year in college. And a lot of my friends were just messing around on it at the time. They were like, yo, you got to get this. So initially, I got it just to watch them goof off because they were just being absolute goofballs yeah, yeah. Uh, on the app. That's how it's funny how that starts with TikTok. You just like everyone starts with some like random ass video and then somehow it does good. And then everyone gets a little bit more serious into it. And... Exactly. And, and that's and it's funny because I've heard that story time and time again. And uh and I've been like, there's no way they started the exact same way as me. Like, I just saw what they were doing. I thought it was funny. And I was like, shoot, I'll try it. And, and it basically, that was the start of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
basically how that that's basically how I how re, I really started in it. It was basically just a gradual increase of creative interest from like graphic design to pictures to video, and then it just led to social media. Word. So is that how you came up on TikTok too? Is you just kind of started posting and then something did good, or how did how did you come up with uh, three hundred thousand followers on TikTok? To be honest, it it came by a surprise. I uh, I was making videos for a while, but it was nothing like the stuff I, I basically make now or the stuff I only allow myself to post now. Uh, it was basically just me goofing off, like doing lip, basic lip, lip syncs like you can see a lot of people doing nowadays. But yeah, yeah. Um, it was basically... Um, that's really that's really how it went. I, I started getting more interested and figured, hey, how about I switch what I learned from the video stuff back into um into TikTok. Yeah, because I can TikTok, I can yeah. see that it now it's like a very your videos are like very I don't know, perfect's the right word, but it, they're like very cinematic is like how I would put it. That's definitely the wave I go for on them and, and that was kind of what I had grown up doing with with just video before like TikTok and all that. So I was like, hey, why don't I do this? I don't see a lot of people doing it at the time. Yeah. And, yeah. and see how it goes. And and that's basically what led to, I think, the content that I made in summer 20, 2018 or 2019. That was really basically how I how I got to where I where I am now. Cause I didn't think many people were really utilizing that camera stuff like they do now. And the stuff they do with the cameras is insane now. Some of the stuff now. And that was like part of the reason like I really like enjoyed TikTok is it wasn't like so professional, but you could still like get views on it. But like you said, exactly. now it's like everyone's getting so crazy with the cameras and like the quality and shit. Mm -hmm. and, I've realized a lot of the time it's like just a push to see what you can do that's different from other people so if you have sure. like high quality cameras that's basically what they're running with now for sure so is that how long you've been you were been at tiktok is uh since like 2018 i think is what you just said a couple of years yeah it was basically basically december i think it was december 2018 and um it was really just a, a pastime at that point. wasn't really I wasn't going hardcore with it at all. And uh, as soon as as soon as classes started basically slowing down, I hopped back I hopped back into it and was like, you know what, let me try to do something with it because by then I had a, a good amount of followers, but nothing like crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like how come you? Uh, I seen you taking a little bit of a break on posting. What's your What's your deal with that? You're just stepping back for a bit or putting your feet into um, something else or what's your... I feel like it's a mixture of a lot of things. Uh, whenever I did quit, it was a really weird time in my life and I just wasn't in... Basically wasn't in that state to really make anything. Yeah. And um, so I was like, you know what? I'll step away. I basically branded myself as somebody that's like always positive on that if I can be. And... I wasn't really feeling positive at the time and it kind of I got in my head pretty pretty heavily and um, So I took a step away from that really just started that was around the time quarantine really uh, started kicking up and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna spend more time with my friends because in the social media stuff It wasn't like I wasn't always talking to my friends. There's a lot of a grind aspect with it, you know Yeah, That's social you media unless your friends are doing <laughs> social media with you it's like a very different realm yeah especially if they don't do it they don't really understand what goes into it and exactly shit like that but so was that around when trump said he was gonna ban tiktok and stuff because i know i found like a really like lack of uh motivation when he said he was gonna ban tiktok because i was like well what the fuck what's the point what's yeah. the point <laughs> i just lost all my followers so like now i gotta restart on something or I think it was a little prior because little prior. at that time, at that time, I stepped away from it, and it wasn't uh, out of like I didn't really hate TikTok. I wasn't really annoyed with the state it was in, but um, whenever I first left, I was I was still I was still chilling with it, and then over the course of time, the more I just got on there and was like looking for inspiration from anything on there, I just couldn't find it. Like uh, the 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 content 
that I had been seeing, at least, like the stuff that was on my For You page, it was all cookie cutter. It was all summer 2019, but it had never gone anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like it, there was no progression. Like nobody saw any creative uptick. I think I saw Micah Cow and Three Dot Corey going crazy. That's that's what I love to watch. But as at a massive scale, there really weren't there really weren't a lot of people. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there were my bad. These people like were talking in my ear all of a sudden. That's all good. <laughs> Got Mario Judah in here. Um, no, but there weren't a lot of people really pushing the uh, pushing the env- envelope creatively, and I just thought it was boring. So whenever he started saying like, "Hey, let's," I'm gonna ban TikTok. At that time, I was going. You know what? Maybe from a creative standpoint. Maybe that's for the best. I don't know. And I was I was tripping on it, and I was more out of a out of a negative mindset, and I wasn't really looking at it all too well. Right. And, uh, but I I really I really couldn't have cared at that time. Now, if you ask me now, like how I feel about it, I I, I have a I have a better outlook on the app, you know. Yeah, we're. Um, so I was, also, I don't know if you want to get into this, but I saw you had some beef with some kid on, on TikTok there. <laughs> what? I don't even know. Like I never even, this is the first time I heard of it. Um, but this Alex kid, I saw Alex one of your videos <laughs> and I saw some comments like saying it was fake beef or real beef or it was just like banter. So like what break, break that down for me. Cause I saw Goodness he's, gracious. he's, he's pretty big too, isn't he? Yeah, he's really he's doing his thing now. And Alex Alex is a homie now. Like after everything was said and done, we realized it was just social media and we didn't really we couldn't really care less about the about the beef stuff. It was basically for numbers at that point. But um there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes really about um or as far as when it comes to influencers and and word getting out or getting around. So whenever we had started, I was making the videos. I was like, okay, okay. And then a friend of mine put on put me on the fact that although he was doing all these Christian raps, all these Christian uh, Christian remixes, uh, he actually himself did not believe in God. It was a lot of satire. And I could have picked up on that, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt at first. I was like, yo, this is funny. Like, you can do your thing. Like, I, if, it's, if it's corny, like, it'll still be funny, especially on that app. And, um... So I was like, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. And then to find out, like, he really didn't believe in all that. And he was, it was just like, there was a lot of ill intent to what he was doing. That kind of pissed me off. So I posted the video calling him out. And I did not think that it would have gone anywhere. Didn't snowball like it did? Yeah, like, I posted this stuff. And I knew I I had gotten a little bit of uh, a a following off of just just the rap videos, I guess, in a sense. And that was basically one of my first, like, not songs, but first times I've ever hopped on a beat, that kind of stuff. Always been interested, but never really did it. But um, I hopped into that, and I was I was doing that, and I saw what he had said, and my friends had told me like how his his whole view on the thing, and that kind of pissed me off because I I come from a, a very not religious but a, a, a very Christ centered background in a sense, right. and I yeah, and I I just I didn't it didn't sit right with me, so I called that I called him out on that. <laughs> Not even on ill intent. It was more of a troll, to be honest, and, and partially to kind of expose people that were like praising him, going, "Oh, I love what you're doing for the Christian community." Because there are a lot of people that just have no brain with it, you know, and they and they really think he's he actually he's actually putting on for that for that community, and um, so that happened, right? And I'm like, okay, we're chilling. We'll see what the video does. Usually, when I posted a video at the time, uh. I didn't really check the numbers. Like I, I just I reply to comments from time to time, but I wasn't looking to see if it would blow up. Because whenever you wait for a little while and then you come back and then all of a sudden you see, uh, yo, it it popped off. It yeah, always yeah. feels good. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Well, I, I I didn't check it that night. I actually fell asleep and um, I wake up the next morning and I get a bunch of texts from a, a couple of friends like in that circle. They were like, "Yo, you pissed Alex off." <laughs> and I went, huh? They sent me a screenshot of his story where he was talking about, and I don't know if I still have it, but in one of the diss tracks, I um, I had I had screenshotted it and put it in there. But um, it was saying something like, "Who the hell is this little shit? 
who does he think he is trying to roast me for like and i think i had like 215,000 at the time and i think still he had 400 500 yeah I mean, at, that, cool. at that point you guys are still i mean once you get that high you're, just, you're fucking you're pretty much on the same playing field exactly like you get to that point and it's more just some people will ego you based off of how many they have but that's usually when you're uh it, it's based basically based on the person some people with millions could care less how much they have and they'll still be like a really cool friend weird but um he had done that and i was like okay okay that's weird and and my friends were like yo he's making another one just be ready and i i was going golfing at the on that day <laughs> but okay maybe i guess i gotta I got to get ready for this, right? And I had a feeling he would, so I had a couple, like, lines ready. And um, I remember sitting on the golf cart, and I knew I didn't completely have, like, a response to his diss track ready. And um, <laughs> so I'm writing stuff on the golf cart on the way between holes. And um, I finally he finally tags me in it and then DMs me on Instagram right after and goes – Hey, bro, just want to let you know, like, what I just sent was, like, no hard feelings or anything. Like, it was it was really just random. And, and he he seemed kind of trolly in the video as well. So I was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. I was like, do you want me to post something or do you want to, like, do, we could, because from that point, people had really taken notice. Like, people knew his rap stuff. People knew my rap stuff. And however, however cringe it may be. It was still like, yo, is he gonna respond? There was a little bit of hype around it, and it was kind of oh, cool yeah, to see yeah, that. Yeah. So I, I respond to it, and mine was a little cutting, but he his was his was I felt like it was well warranted with the way his went. Like I got tough skin, and I let it bounce off me. So I was like, you know what? At this point, if it's a diss, it's a diss, and I'll and I'll do it. And um, so I responded to it, and he goes back. And has all his fans like talking shit in my in my comments. Was he actually like sending his fans out though? Like after, according to some, yes. And I wasn't in his live stream, so I couldn't tell you if he was. But it got really caustic really quickly. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me end this. And I I I basically I made one that kind of kind of really basically ended it. And he was like, you got it. And um, that was around the time I think I posted one of my first songs. And that was kind of like the last the last line of that. That uh, that diss track was like, uh, you should really take some notes, give my song another listen. Or something of that, uh, of that element. And <laughs> so I, I played it for a couple of friends before I posted it. They thought it was actually okay. And I was like, shoot, let me go ahead and do it. And uh, posted it. He was like, yo, that was, act- I'm not even going to lie, bro. That's actually pretty good. Like he sent me DMs and stuff and uh, was what was looking to really iron it out. And I'm not, I'm not one to hold a grudge necessarily. So I was like, you know, if he, if he's trying to chill on it, if he wants to become friends, like dude's clearly creative and clearly wants to do something. Yeah. With you guys media. created this whole like community around it almost. Exactly. Are, it was You guys so are playing weird. the social media game. That, and that. that's the first time I really realized like that's. People want drama. People on social media Facts. want drama. They want, yeah. Real or fake, either. It, it, so it was, it was at a point where I went, okay, I this is cool. It's funny to see the numbers come through over a fake beef or what had become a fake beef. But at the same time, it, so it just didn't sit right with me. Like this is how I have to get how, to how get I have views. to get numbers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I was doing okay, but I hadn't seen that type of growth before. So that... And I went back and forth with Champ because they were doing their thing, and I thought it was funny, and that was a pure troll, but they took it serious. It was like who's that? Champ, Champion, uh, twelve or Champion? I can't. Remember I don't know if I've champion. heard of him. I might have. I might have. If he, if I looked him up, I might know who they are. But you've definitely seen his trends. You know, like that boo bitch. I'm a ghost thing. Yeah, yeah. He made that song. Oh yeah. Um, Nolan Rosebro, because for some reason he thought he was gonna do something in the music shit, and I fuck with his comedy shit, but his his music shit sucks. Boy, and uh, calling everybody <laughs> out. <laughs> I still hold that. Like he's grown. He's definitely gotten better. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he's definitely more talented at comedy, and that's he. Me and him really. Ours was more real than mine and Alex's, but um, we did that, and and I basically called it at that point. I was like, you know what. I'm done with all the beefing shit. Like, 
it was fun while it lasted and made for some funny memories and I, we've got some good friends and i still check in with alex from time to time but um i really didn't want to play that social media game anymore yeah yeah so um yeah it, although it was kind of real at the beginning it ended up being like you know what this it's isn't that serious let's yeah. just do it for the money for the views farm yeah. it out for the views a little bit play the game <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And he's become a really cool guy to, to just like chop it up with. He's really funny. Like just in whenever he's not on his social media shit, he's also just as funny then, you know. Weird, yeah, that's cool. You make a make something out of that. Exactly, exactly. It's a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to be able to get to to make friends through it, even through something as weird as that. Weird. Um oh fuck. Hold on, sorry, here, I just fucking, I got fucking zoned in there for a second. <laughs> I'm about to get out there, get in the field real quick. I was sitting in the, oh, he almost got forced it's on. Fucking, it's surprisingly hard to, like, play COD and ask questions at the same time. And I can't I imagine it, it would be any different answering them playing. <laughs> it's kind of difficult, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so you, you hopped off the, uh. Is that what kind of got you into your uh, your music state then? Or like you were kind of picking up, you're already kind of doing music on the side? I was kind of already doing music on the side. Or that kind of spiraled you more into music? I haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't looked too much at your SoundCloud. I saw you got, you got a few plays on there. Like you're hitting the thousands on songs, which is pretty decent. You got a couple that were a little higher. But is that what spiraled you a little bit? more into, into music, music or were uh, you already posting music before that uh i was never really posting music before that a lot of that time i didn't really have much confidence in the, in my music like and just songwriting in general but i always loved it you know Weird. and um so i was doing that for a while but i never really posted anything so nobody really knew i did it right. and uh the diss tracks tracks and the and the tiktoks that i made with it were just a funny way to get practice and like just goof around and see what i can do in like say 15 20 minutes just make a little like eight bar song or something Word and so just go for it just kind of a hobby thing right now exactly and although i have a passion for it i i worked full time i do college and uh and i mean i i don't really have much time to do much else outside of that you know right and uh so I was like, well, I'm going to keep doing this. If I find time to make songs, I'll make songs. And I ended up finding the time to sit down and, and make a couple. I, I became friends with a really good engineer and uh, also also film film director. Dude's absolutely talented at everything. And he basically became my mentor in that shit Crazy. named Drake Marat. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun to get into just making music and stuff and and chilling with him because we basically had the same mind about a lot of stuff and that was more what got me passionate about it like he was really listening to me, my stuff and i told him i was like listen there's no promises like that any of this will be good i'm just starting out on it and i still gotta get like my confidence down you know yeah and he was like no dude you you definitely have something you could do with it it's not just gonna come overnight like it's gonna take a lot of work those are but, like uh, the best people you actually find someone that is like also wants to be creative and is like supportive at the same time exactly like, and he keeps it real with you that's what i'm trying to find more in life is more people that are like more into the social media creative mindset like not even just social media just like creative like artists producers like photographers like literally just like anything that's not like and that was like kind of the 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 theme behind this podcast is just people that are like doing things that are like out of the norm per se like to the average person exactly somebody that's kind of dreaming for hire wanting to do something exactly more, yeah you know? and uh it's i was talking to Oprahside the other day i actually met him through cod and he was talking about the importance of just surrounding yourself with like-minded people in that respect but people facts. that are also going to keep it a buck with you you know facts so um it's definitely it's definitely something you've got to look for because they're not always just going to be if they're if they're really on their creative shit if they're really on their grinding shit like 
you're not gonna see him outside all the time, you know? Yeah, for real. Do you and, uh, go ahead. What'd you say? Do you find it? Do you find it harder to make those connections, like because of COVID and shit right now, or because uh, it's mainly social media based? It's not, not really impacting you. Um, I feel like because of because of like me stepping away from social media as well, COVID really didn't help. But also in Alabama, it's there's not really a, a major base to to build off of. Like I know creatives in Alabama. Like D is or Sev is one of the creatives I know in Alabama. But that don't... boy is. T I'm telling you, that kid's gonna go somewhere. Oh yeah, I, I've been I've known him for I think since sheesh, bro. It's probably been four or five years now. Yeah, talking your relationship and, um... with that. How did that come to be? So we both have a mutual friend named uh, named Joe, and basically he he had come to to my school for a while. Ended up because of a lot of stuff happening, a lot of unfortunate things happening. Um, he ended up having to go to a different school, and that's where he met D. And they became really good friends, or at least I'm 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 guessing like that's how I ended up meeting him. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, we all 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 went out and hooped one day. And uh, we we're just chilling. Everybody was having fun. It was a lot of fun to just. We went out to base and we we're hooping with everybody and uh, just doing our thing, you know. And from that point on, we were all in a group chat and we didn't really talk like OD at that time. Like we we knew each other. We were like, yo, nice to meet you, that kind of thing. But it wasn't really until I, I basically got more into the video stuff that I was talking. I'd go, I'd talk with D about like creative, creative shit and like. Um, just what we really want to do in that scene and how we want to impact like our, our 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 circles basically yeah yeah whenever it comes to that and that's basically what what started the friendship we we'll play cop from time to time now but uh it's been difficult to get in in touch with the people like him that i know like in the in the city we don't get to see each other a whole lot because of quarantine you know so that's right. been frustrating not being able to see him and uh another buddy jt but they're, they've been on their grind with the music shit for forever, and it's just a matter of time at this point before they really pop off. Yeah, um, I was blown away that he only had the amount of followers he did when he hit me up. Mad underrated. Incredibly underrated. For sure. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just waiting. I told him, whenever I, I was doing the music shit OD, I'd, I'd be sending him my tracks because I really... I really revere his his music opinion you know i yeah, only yeah. send it to people that i really want to keep it real with me and that have a good ear for music you know so he's he's basically seen my progress in it and and helped me out along the way uh in many different ways Weird. No, but dope guy dope guy yeah i appreciate him for even setting this up and uh, again i appreciate you for actually coming on because like you said lots of people when they they start to get a few followers they just got this ego little... and stuff exactly exactly um yeah no again i appreciate Not it because i message people fucking a whole day trying to get people to come on and yeah i was surprised that you actually said yeah of course bro of course and um uh, no that's the that's that gary v way of going at it you've got to especially coming up like that like i that's one of the reasons I came up and made made a good amount of friends in the social media scene. Was like, I went, hey, here are my skill sets. This is what I want to do. Can I provide something to you and like, uh, at, like free of charge? I was editing dudes' videos like free of charge all the time. Right. Just get my name out there, you know. And and once you build those connections, when it's people that really actually like care about you and your success, those those connections will take you a long way. So I I appreciate you for reaching out to me. So it was cool to see. Like the 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 two worlds collide because I've really been in this basically ever since I stepped away from social media I've really been in this college shit trying to get that in. There's actually a semi pro tournament that I wanted to play in today but we couldn't get the team all on and game battles is fucked right oh, now. Oh so. shit, yeah. Is that your that's your passion right now? Your hobby? Your next step is gaming and streaming. Uh, that's something I've been thinking about a whole lot. Um, you know. I and you had you, right before we started, <laughs> right before we started, you had you had called out the hundred thieves wallpaper, yeah, yeah. and that was one of the things I I've basically been seeing a whole lot more in uh, 
and gaming organizations. Because when I st- took a step away from the social media thing, I made a Twitter. I started doing GBs like or game battles, <laughs> and um, and I play a good bit of that with my friends. And we got to the point where we were doing okay. Like we were we were we were basically chilling, playing against kids that I had played for years, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the challenge, and I kept at it. I was like, you know what? Screw it. We'll keep playing. We got on a on a small team for a little bit, and that ended up falling through because some of the some of the low tier org owners are, are really really weird with it. But, yeah, um, like you actually got on. Uh, you had a little org yeah, going. Yeah, we got on. Yeah, we were we were hyped about it. It was cool because we all got another reason. Even during quarantine, for us to all like basically just be together on the game and stuff. You know. Yeah. Did you get a black screen on the game? Uh. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, no, it's holding <laughs> in right now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I yeah. was like, what the heck. <laughs> No, but it was cool for it was basically our way of all being together during quarantine, and that was one of the things that really kept me sane throughout throughout the whole thing. And uh, I realized as I got into it, there are definitely levels to it, you know. Like I thought I would be good, and then I get in there and I start playing, and I'd be playing these kids that really grind like actual stuff, playing against pros, and I get torched, just, just waxed, straight yeah. ran over. And I went, wait, this is a different level. And it really challenged me. And it was the same way I like TikTok challenged me to basically improve with, with what I was doing. So I was like, you know what? Let me get into this. And and I was playing eights, and eights is basically we get a full custom lobby and we play a bunch of like the Yeah, no. Games. Yeah, no, I'm aware of uh how the game battles and stuff works. I was like big into watching like all those like Nade Shot and Optic and all those guys yeah. too. And uh I like when I was in high school still me and my friends we were like big into GBs and I was like we'd get home from school we'd hit the GBs and we'd be running GBs all night and and stuff like that we I don't play as much anymore like competitively but my one friend is still is still big into it what's his name I might do you know his gamer tag his gamer tag is uh I believe it's just Narmo Narmo I feel like I've seen him on the ladder before. He's uh, I feel like he's pretty good. He, I think he's decently high up there. He plays with a lot of people, I believe. Yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of demons in that scene with with just their movement and stuff. Kids don't miss a bullet whenever you get to that yeah. higher tier. So it's cool to see that, and that really challenges me. But the thing that's really kept me around, I'd say, is um, I've got a lot of I made a lot of friends through it. You know, we'd spend hours on end just playing and trying to get better and, and really grinding it and. We built, I built friendships and and basically this community. We've got a cool circle. Um, we go back and forth sometimes because all of us are really passionate. Like you can't find somebody in our in our in our lobby who so doesn't really not care about the game or not care about winning. Weird. You know? And um, so we, I basically made a good bit of friends through it, and it's been a lot of fun just hopping on. It's always a fun time, laughing, laughing our heads off, bro. Just. And we'll still be playing stuff. We'll play serious stuff and just joke around and really, like, at that point, especially with GBs, unless you're playing stuff for, like, big cash because we'll play wa- wagers and tournaments and stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Um, and let, whenever we hop in GBs, we're just goofing off, and I've had a, a good amount of funny moments just in the past week. Yeah, that's you know? just but, the life of fucking playing just, games and shit, hanging out with the homies and just grinding. It, exactly so as far as your last question had gone like with if, if this is really what i want to do uh now that school's over at least for winter break and i don't go back till basically february um i've been thinking about it like what am i really gonna start grinding out whenever whenever school ends because now i do have time and it's just work and uh and just responsibilities around the house um I, I feel I want to bring this circle into into my TikTok circle, like into my TikTok community. Like whenever we have like funny moments doing like stuff, you'll see. Uh, I think Average Joe Woe is one of them. Uh, there are a good amount of kids in in the card scene that have been posting on TikTok because they realize with with people like uh, Luminosity, they did the Rising Stars challenge simply through TikTok, and it really diversifies the content as yeah, far yeah. as as far as gaming goes. So. I see an uptick in that, and I'm like, you know what? If I can, if I can do something with that, and basically do both, I, who's to say, who's to say I shouldn't, you know? So that's what I really want to do. I'm gonna keep on grinding, like competitive stuff, getting better competitively, and hopefully playing tournaments and placing and stuff. But I also want to do the content side of it, like Nade Shot, and that's why I have yeah. that hundred thieves thing, because I want to work for them one day, and it'll be a grind, I know, but um. 
it's definitely a goal I have up there. Nah, man, you don't gotta, uh... You don't gotta worry about me thinking dreams are stupid or anything like that. Being someone that has similar goals and aspirations, it's... I understand what it's like, and... I understand other people would think that some of them are crazy, but it all starts somewhere. And you just gotta... Exactly. You said it's just a grind. And it's hard to find, not only that, it's hard to find a person in, in, the, in the social media scene, at least if they're... If, and you're able to t differentiate, essentially, about it. But um, you know the ones that actually have dreams to really do it in this shit. And you know the ones that are just doing it for numbers right now, you know? Right. There's a, there's a difference between somebody grinding for, like, an actual spot, like an actual thing they want to be like in this scene and somebody that just wants to go hey i've got a lot of numbers look at me you know right and um so the fact just the fact that you said that lets me know like you're on the side that's like yo i'm really passionate about this and i and i've got these goals so you keep that up and you just keep the mindset of just like constant grinding and not only grinding like hours wise but also trying to figure out different smarter ways to go about it and that's it's like definitely... i think that's where i'm stuck right now is just finding something that's different and than everybody else i like this i tell you that much if you like the if you like the podcast dude the, this is huge because i've got i've met a couple kids there's a guy named spark slays on tiktok right now i think he's sitting at about 46k yeah yeah but um he's doing social media management for a top am team right now and he's got a podcast up, and I think it's called the Sparkcast actually. And uh, he's had a lot of a lot of top gamers and stuff on on uh, yeah. on his podcast, you know. And so it's cool to see that you're doing something different. And I this this reminded me as I was getting on, it reminded me of uh, the CDL actually has something like this. Like um, they have Maven, who's a caster that will have all the pros out and doing that and and casting. Honestly, if you wanted to get into casting or just content creation in general, when it comes to, to both sides of this, this is definitely a good way to start, you know? Yeah, like I started with like YouTube videos and stuff and then TikTok and stuff. And like I had like a regular podcast with my girlfriend and stuff and it was like, it was good and it was going well, but it's like everyone's got a podcast, you know, like I just need to add like yeah. an extra an extra layer to it to make it a little different and like i don't know everyone plays cod everyone watches video games so that was the theory behind it like even if it's someone that doesn't play games it would still be like an element of it would just be funny like if you had a ch chick on that doesn't play games or whatever them just running into a wall or something <laughs> while you're still Thank chalking you. it up <laughs> exactly though like it, it's it's a really cool idea now i was whenever you reached out to me about it and and d was telling me about it i was like yo this is actually sick uh let me do this like i'm, I'm definitely down to it yeah so. and then like one day like if it got big enough i'd like to have a studio where like and then you could record both people's gameplay because like obviously not everyone's gonna be able to like record their shit so yeah that's like the long-term goal one thing I realized, especially with uh, <coughs> social media, because there's a lot of expense that goes into it. You work with what you've got, and whenever you get to that point, you'll have you'll have the the money you need to basically Facts. take it to that next level of content creation. And so it's Facts. all about being patient with it, you know. Weird. Um, but I, I rock with that, dude. I'm excited to see. I'm I, I'm excited to see that studio one day. Yeah. I feel like you keep it up. One day. You're gonna get there. You just gotta get some more people in here but yeah let's get back into you what's your what's your personal life look like right now like what i guess you're going to school talk me about if you're going to school you're working um and then like how that revolves around your like content creation throughout a day yeah um basically right now well actually since school's over what it looked like basically two weeks ago was finals every day um just sitting there doing that first working for six or seven hours a day and because of covid i've got to work from home Great. but um that that should be coming to a close soon because they figured out uh a way that will comply with um the mandate and still and still allow us to come in 
but uh, it's basically work for a lot of hours and then school as many as many classes as I as I have for that day. Um, do that until probably seven, eight, nine in the evening, and then hop on and, and play games, whatever there is to play. If it's a tournament or a wager, um, or GBs, like really, really basically doing that, and um, we'll do that for a good amount of hours and then sleep and repeat, sleep and repeat, and uh, so I haven't really fused that in with my um with my with my content creation stuff yet but that's something i've been having a lot of talks about like just trying to get into that um so what i that's what it looks like but what i want it to look like at least over this break you know is wake up possibly hit the gym because i actually have time to do that now <laughs> and <Yeah>. um <laughs> because i i'm looking like a twig bro this quarantine's got me down bad yes but, um, <laughs> it's tough bro For real. it's tough Oh, dude, I think my iPhone cord is thicker than my freaking arms lately. This is crazy. <laughs> no, I feel nah, you. it's but, hard uh, to, like, run your uh, run your content creation, go to school, work, and fucking be healthy and fucking just everything. Exactly. A lot of people don't get it until they, they actually are in that position. Exactly. And and some people some people have that have that luxury of being able to skip over a couple of those things and like you you're able to make money through other stuff so if if school's not your thing and you've got the content creation going like go go search it or just go seek it seek it out and if it doesn't work you can always go back to college that's if you don't have like honestly if you don't have a degree or something like or not a degree but like a um scholarship or or your scholarship's open you know yeah yeah but um as far as I want it to look like right there like i said the gym basically get home get my work done uh whenever whenever i get off of that try to get some videos up get some videos posted probably from the night before and that's what i've seen kids like griffin johnson do kids like uh it's Alyssa. i don't know if you any know any of those names in the scene but they're pretty yeah yeah they're pretty no, for good. sure i do um but they'll, they'll record videos days ahead and that's something i've never been good about is like preparing it you know Oh, and shit, um, I didn't hit Nuketown, my bad. Oh, you're chilling, you're chilling. Miami's a fun map for some for some uh, game modes. But um Yeah, sorry, go ahead, carry on. Sorry, carry off. <laughs> no, you're chilling, you're chilling. Uh basically do that. Prepare content for the next day and post it yesterday or at least have a have a workflow that'll get that content done and out quicker. Um, because I don't want to start or keep spending three or four hours on a video. You know, if I'm working on a on a rap, sometimes it takes inspiration to do that, and I I'd rather prepare that a couple days ahead and have the video made later that week. You know, so really working on that because I know I can get the quality right. I've just got to get the consistency up. So that's that's really what I'm wanting to do over this break is really build that back up and try to show them different sides. Because there's Tyler Golden and then there's Switch. And both sides don't really know about the other, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, you got uh, you got kind of two fan bases going on, or two communities. Uh, Is that your two communities situation? Basically, yeah. That's 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 how I look at it, at least. You know, um, I do all of it to make friends. It's never really to make money unless I've gotten to that part, you know. Yeah. And um, so whenever it comes to like the fan stuff, I don't. I just don't really view them as that it's always it's always building a circle building a community that i can go back to and be like yo this is the like we've got a yeah, bunch of people that. yeah from all different spots in the world and stuff and everybody's just vibing like they know they've got people to go to and that's what that's what and people will call it oh uh, and i used to get bullied for it to be honest but uh the, like the group that really was supporting me at the time they called themselves the golden gang and stuff but it was so many different people from so many different places and I literally check in the DM like group chats because they'd add me in them. Yeah, and they just be they just be chopping it up. Like if somebody was going through it, oh, get shop. I just got world starred. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> no, but um, they'd really be they they they'd be supporting each other. So it's cool to find a, a group of people that may have liked my stuff, but also like cared about others. You know, and I think like my positivity on the app reflected that. And it was cool to see that transform into the people that supported me as well. Yeah, that's cool. But uh, as far as the COD community goes, it's a little different. I, I think, I had I had friends in this, you know, and that's that's one way you really, you really make it in this is being able to make friends and networking is so big, like just exactly. to get anywhere. 
Like, even, like, just, like, running the one episode with Sev, and then he led me to you, and, like, it's just a big snowball. Excellent. No, it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely a lot of fun to to make those connections and if you can make them in a friendly manner and it's not strictly business, you know, yeah, that's yeah. always always a good sign because that people are gonna rock with you even if it's not on some like money making stuff or not on some some content stuff, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. All like all the kids on COD that I play with, like I've got literally I've got Peter, I've got Luke, I've got Chris, I've got. Uh, uh billy like all these different guys like i don't call them by like their gamer tag because it's it's they're more friends than like just teammates to me you know yeah yeah and um being able to do that and and switch it up with those guys is something that i didn't really do as well with uh with with content on on social media because a lot of kids only care about the numbers and they'll get locked into that and be like yo if we collab this would make so much money or this would get so many views you know um yeah so i definitely recommend that as a way to basically get your name out it's just making friends wherever you find them you know yeah facts so i'm excited i'm excited to see where it goes from there just as far as building out the um building out my 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 friends in the cod circle but also kind of having people that are on the social media side that go, yo, these kids are really funny. And maybe having them, like, I've got a bunch of friends that could be really good content creators. They just don't either have the the equipment or the, or the um, basically, like, the internet or the, like, the circumstances they need to really produce good yeah, content, yeah. you know? So, gotcha. being able to be that intermediary that might be able to put them on, not even in a egotistical sense, but just how I want to help my friends out and help them or see them make it in this ship. It would be really cool. So I think that's what I'm grinding for next in the in the coming basically year. Yeah, that's dope that you uh, you're not just the I got three hundred thousand followers guy, and you're actually looking to build friendships and network and make it more than just the numbers. <clears throat> you actually care about other people's growth. Which is cool. I feel like there were there weren't enough people like that, you know. And I've never been one to just. It's just it feels awkward to me just being having an ego over stuff, you know. Like I feel like people. Some people go, yeah, this is me. Like I've really made it to this spot. I'm not gonna fuck with anybody that's under like five hundred thousand, you yeah. know. Yeah. And that's just never that's never what I want to become because I've seen it and I hate how it looks. Like just watching that from the outside, I would never want to become that. And um, I just don't think it's in my nature either. So um, it's definitely it's definitely a balance. So it's definitely a balance because you've got to realize there are some people that are gonna mess with your mental, and some people that are really gonna support it or that you want to support. And having to differentiate differentiate between those two uh, is a is a big thing because you can get taken advantage of really quick if you don't. For real. Yeah. So, in that sense, outside of uh, just, like, watching your friends grow and making connections and stuff, do you got, like, a dream collab that you'd either want to, like, work on a piece of content with? Like, either it be COD content or uh, a TikTok with someone. Like, That's a good question. Work with, for example, someone like Nadeshot, one at Thieves, like... You gotta. Shoot. This is a difficult one, bro. You got a dream, huh? A dream collab. Uh, put it into the. Put it into the atmosphere. Put it into the atmosphere. I gotta put it out there. We gotta manifest this right now. Um, shoot. Can I? Can I basically? Actually, you know, a uh, dream content collab. Cause dream music collab and dream content collab. Yeah, give me, give me one each. Deem, give me right, give right. me your dream music collab and your dream like content collab dream content collab probably shoot you see i i would say nate shot and i i think i'd rather want him as a basically a boss or like a manager in it i've watched him the top man for so long bro that i i feel like that would be a lot of fun just to be in the same party Timmy? and work on something with him yeah. Timmy, dude 
gotta love Timmy. I've always I've always loved his stuff. Uh, it's definitely it would definitely be either him or or Envoy, Optic Envoy. He's a he's a one of the new kids on the block. Basically, he came into Optic last year, yeah, and he's really getting his comps in. Yeah, trust me, dude. Give him a little bit. He's the one. You'll you'll hear about him. Yeah, I, he's basically, and a lot of people say this. He he's probably gonna be the next comp. In a sense, yeah, you know, he, he's probably gonna be that next kid that carries the torch. Um, simply from he not only is he talented, but I think he's really under a hex's wing. He's getting uh, he's basically being winged under the content creation side, and he's really building his brand. So I definitely wanna be able to get in and in, into like that kind of collab. Yeah, yeah. Cause I I think he's a dope person. Our play styles are the same, and. Uh, it would be a lot of fun just to goof around because his vibes are always on time. Dream music collab, however. Um, hmm. This is a difficult one, too. <laughs> um, sheesh, bro. Um, it would probably have to be... Man. The Kid Leroy... I want to say the Kid Leroy. Leroy? Yeah, Leroy is dope. Leroy. And I rock with Leroy heavy. Um... I've I've liked this stuff for a while. I know there are some people that don't like his stuff, but I his features, dude. I haven't heard him give a bad feature. Dude. It's cr so. that kid's talent is on the next level. Considering he's what he might be sixteen now. Yeah, he's sixteen or seventeen, I think. And his his potential is off the charts. And like the shit he was putting out at like fifteen, like his first couple songs, like Tekka there, and like. It's crazy. It's unreal. The kid is that young. It makes me feel like, what have I done with my fucking life? Exactly. Literally. And I think it was, it was, it's really just born talent and the opportunity he had. Cause I, I found him on SoundCloud and I was like, yo, who is this guy? I think I saw, I heard his song, uh, winning. Yeah. With Little Skies. And I was like, yo, this is hard. Like, this is good. And I found out he was 15 and from Australia. And he didn't sound like either of those two things. Yeah. And I went, huh? Yeah, exactly. I Literally, same thing. Found him on Instagram. And, like, you found out that he's 15. You're like, exactly. It was a huh? There's no it way. It's like, right? this yeah. kid is how old? <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It's, it's like, crazy. I'm and fucking, then I saw. Yeah. It's like you, you're doing your thing. And it's like, fuck, I'm like. 22 i don't fucking have done anything yeah. this kid's 15 he's just pumping <laughs> out hits it's basically and i i talked to somebody the other day about it because this is something i struggle with i use that comparison more as inspiration than uh than like a killer of, of passion you know and i feel like sometimes comparison will, will mess you up in the head whenever it comes to making stuff and um but I see stuff like that, and I'm like, okay, if he can really get to this spot at 16 or 17, and he's been putting in hours, like, there's one, there's stuff that he's doing that I'm not, and there's, like, talent that he has that I'm not, so I'll look at it and go, okay, I'll use it as a way to reevaluate, like, what is my talent? Like, what am I going to really want to do in this? Yeah, yeah. And, um... I just I take that and I put the time into it. You Shit, know? You and got, that's one reason I'm. Really you got a very optimistic mindset, which is good to hear. Lots <laughs> of people, to, yeah. Like I know that's something that I struggle with. Is it's not like I try to be, but like it's like oh, I only got a hundred views this time or like whatever, and it, it just like it's, I know for me at least it it. Uh, It'll mess you up. Yeah. It'll mess you up. And I wasn't I wasn't at the place I was just telling you about like probably a year ago. It's it's I think everybody does it. It's hard to it's hard to look at that stuff, see people popping off and go, Wow, that's where I should be. Why am I putting in all this time and I'm not getting to where he's getting at and he's only been here for three months. I saw the same thing with the Mike Cacao. Like I was like, dude, I've been doing this for months before him. He made a couple of videos and went crazy. But he's talented at it and i looked at it and i went some people i can't i can't imagine mine's gonna be the my path is gonna be the same as these kids you know right. there's always gonna be somebody either more talented or better it like and i see i view that the same way and um like in and content like Back, people yeah, 
somebody told me the other day that um basically the no i think it was logic logic had said it but they quoted him and it was like the greatest rapper alive is probably sacking produce like there are kids that we've never met that have immense amounts of talent that just never go for it yeah and they they could be better than the kids that we revere now you know and it yeah. put that in perspective like that there's no reason for me to think i've got to be at this certain place because i've got a certain path and, and you ultimately go if i manifest this every day and i work towards this i'm gonna get there someday you know yeah and it, and it will i set a goal for for five hundred thousand on uh on tiktok did i reach it no but i got the 300 something before I, st I took a step away from it simply because i set my sights on that and it challenges you so it may you may not get to exactly where you want it to go but that's why you always like we were talking about earlier with the dreams and stuff you aim high you know because even if yeah. you fall short it's better than most and at least you can say you tried and you don't got that regret exactly and who's to say you can't you got to surround yourself with people that tell you you can and that'll not just yes men true. but people that'll true, really true. call you call you whenever you're not not at that spot where you should be but also go yo you really have the you really have what it takes yeah and no man that's that's all good inspirational shit that that's <laughs> it's that's nice to hear that someone else someone else thinks that way oh yeah it's it's you've got to especially in this stuff you will never find a, a social media guru or anybody that's really made it in that stuff that'll tell you they can't do anything like they'll always tell you they can do something or at least they're gonna try you know yeah facts and that's that's a big mindset uh it's a keep in it this guy is snapping on with his this mouse and keyboard bro <laughs> going in <laughs> man is cracked oh <laughs> bro i gotta get on the keyboard i could never i always try and i just rage a fucking keyboard i just something about using a mouse and games i just can't do it i don't know what it is i can only do it for certain game there's no way i could do it for games like cod that's yeah well been going for an hour ish so i appreciate you for coming on once again and if you want to plug anything coming up i know my uh measly followers compared to yours aren't uh, <laughs> nothing to plug to but if you want to plug away yeah well let me first of all let me go ahead and say y'all go follow this guy because i got the stream up um go follow him on instagram let me pull up your instagram real quick uh are you want to you want to go ahead and say it uh it's nick luke n-i-c-k-l-u eke it's spelled funny i'm debating on making a, a a brand change and that's like my real life name and i was debating yeah. on taking the extra e out so when people search me it actually comes up as that but i don't know i might just leave it i haven't decided yet. i thought about the same thing lately but uh is it unorthodox podcast as well yeah and the podcast is just unorthodox podcast one word and then underscore after it yeah, so definitely go follow those things if you're watching the VODs, if you're watching anything like that. I'll probably clip this and post it later. Um, but um, at the same time, yo, I, I do have my Instagram is Tyler Golden. It's just uh, no spaces or anything. T-Y-L-E-R-G-O-L-D-E-N. I stream every day for like six plus hours now. But uh, that, that name is uh, Swish Tyler, capital S, capital T. Um, and... That's about it. If you haven't followed me on TikTok, go go pull that up. It's Tyler Golden with two ends because I couldn't get the second end removed, sadly. But um, I'm I'm hoping to be back up on this thing, and uh, definitely this definitely won't be the last time you you hear from me or Luke. Hopefully, we'll be able to get together and work on some stuff for real. Yeah, for real, that'd be dope if we could get some get some stuff together, even run some streams together or uh, something. Cause I, yes, I do stream a little bit, but I've just been I used to stream Warzone just about every night, but I've just been taking a step back and figuring out my priorities. Yeah, bro. Hey, you got to. That's what I had to do. And that's one reason I, I'm basically got a clear mind going back into the social media stuff. So. Okay, I got, at the end of the podcast, I do a couple just rapid fire questions. So I just got random rapid fires. Let's go. 
Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes or no? It's a hot dog. Yeah. That's meat between two buns. Pause. All right. <laughs> fast food. <laughs> Go to fast food. <laughs> uh, cookout. Cookout. I love cookout. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fuck. If your clone walks into a room and you kill him, is it suicide or murder? I clone myself every day. I'd say it's murder because I basically differentiated the two personalities. Best COD of all time. Best COD of all time. Oh, definitely not Modern Warfare. Um, <laughs> I like this one, but I'd have to say Modern Warfare 2. Modern, uh, Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2. Oh, Whoa, why just blaspheme? Almost said the right answer. <laughs> uh, celebrity Crush. Celebrity crush. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, Sean Mendes, but Camila Cabello. Oh my God. Hey. All right. <laughs> Thank you once again for coming on. Thanks everyone for watching. Anyone, yeah, anyone that watched, this will be live on YouTube shortly. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. All right. Hey, yo, Peace. Turn that up. Hear a lot of niggas talking, they ain't really body. Really Better watch what you say. Yeah. I ain't got no time for the games on play. Niggas say they want it, they ain't doing what it take. The nigga, you in the way. Yeah, got a shotty calling me on FaceTime.